the, the questions from Derek Shrinan. These are five questions. Okay. Oh, really? Fucking count that. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, Derek, number four. Derek, ask your opinion on the current Rainbow lineup. There isn't any. <laughs> it's non plus. <laughs> there is no current Rainbow lineup. <laughs> you mean the, you mean the five or six shows that they did? That lineup. That's it. Do I have to, Derek? My opinion is well known. Another dry old conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, it was not a rainbow reunion because the only reunion was Richie with himself. That was it. That was it. It's the only guy from Rainbow. Okay. It. So it was no reunion. And go look at a video, Derek, and you tell me what my opinion would be. Because I'm so sick of getting killed on blabbermouth and all of these stupid yellow pressing. Oh, Joe says Richie's disappointed him. Joe says, Joe says uh, it was a money grab. Joe says, go fuck yourselves, please. Can I say that? Go fuck yourselves. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go fuck yourselves, you people. You only want to stir the shit, right, Debbie? They only want to stir the shit. Cradle, hey, it was what it was, and that's what it was. That's it. I'm done. That's it. It had no fire. It had none. Eh, eh. Like I need to explain this to Sharinian? Why, he was jealous Jen's got the job? <laughs> I got to tell you something, Joe. I didn't even know there was a current rainbow lineup until Derek's question popped up here. There you go. <laughs> sure. So, didn't you hear all the albums they made? I didn't even know. So, but Derek, <laughs> Derek, thank you very much, you know, and I hope I did. And, and rainbow, if you watch it, I, God bless. I, I don't know. Rainbow. Well, there's no rainbow. I don't, That's know, I don't know. Blackmore's knife band, basically, with Yenzo Hansen on keyboards and, and a singer. That was it. Debbie uh, pops up here. Derek is a Yenta. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is a Yenta. He's the kind of guy that likes to. I know all it is. I'm half Jewish, please. And he does. He, he, I'm, I'm Jewish by proxy, okay? And uh, he, he does. He likes to stir the pot. You know, well, listen, Derek, don't let me. Don't let me. Don't make me. Don't let him upset. Because I have. I have to. Yeah, I'm not upset. I no. just don't let me open the door on you. <laughs> Sheridan's last question is, and this is a real shit story. He goes like, he goes, "What's your favorite hair product?" Number five. Sheridan. What's my favorite, favorite? Favorite who? Favorite hair products. Uh, well, I know the best because of uh, you know the wigs you have to really take care of really nicely, you know. You do, and she, and and all that. Like I, I'll be honest with you. After after you. You have you're using them for so long. You actually become a hairstylist. You you really do. I mean, you know, I could cut, I could shampoo, shower, shampoo, you name it. Okay, but there's some very expensive products out there, uh, L'Oreal, that uh, are re very good. I mean, for you, Derek, you got to go to the you know the supermarket to buy your shit. But uh, <laughs> you know, top of the notch. I even have some had some custom stuff. You know, silky soft, blah blah blah, all that. You know, I, it's a good question, though. And I know he's sticking his finger, you know, in my butt. But at the speaking same of time. Tara goes, speaking of bullies, Derek, look, Derek has to be tarred and fettered over here. Look, the girls are going crazy on him. But Are you kidding? I can't I can't take Derek Sheridan seriously for Derek, anything. Derek is getting, he, he even told me it's receding, his hair was, he, he, girls, he told me, we're all getting older. It's, it's know, all going. It's all good. It, see, this is this is what people don't understand. It's all gonna go, gentlemen. Okay. It's all go. You girls are lucky, but it's all gonna recede. You're all gonna go. I'm there a little earlier, maybe a lot earlier, and I'm already adjusted and loved. Look, look, look see, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I so I, it's it's receding, but, but yeah. You know, but you know what? That's how it starts. That's how it starts. So you know what? What are you gonna do then? All you jerk offs. You, what are you gonna do then? You okay. Do you gotta put the bandana on there. I've done know? it. I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. I still do it. I still do. Yeah. I actually, I'll tell you, uh, since Derek is getting all personal, I'm gonna get personal with you, Joe, because you're my friend now. I've yeah, taken sure. the, the Propecia, but what the Propecia does, I'm gonna tell you, it messes you up. 
So when I stopped taking it after my wife said she decided to settle down with me, this animal, and and I'm like, look, I go, that's it. I go, she this is who me. I am. This is who I am. She doesn't care. They don't care. You when you find love, they find love. So I stopped taking it because it messes with your, you know, when you, your moments down there, it does. It does. I think I think you're gonna get a menstrual period if you keep taking it. That's what I think. So check it out. <laughs> Do you know when I stopped taking it and my wife and I? Uh, you know, we were together forever, ever. And then that's when my daughter was born. When I stopped taking the, um, hello, it's like, a, it worked like a birth, um, control Be, no, because dude, I don't know why, but it must've, uh, arrested. It's a good word. Arrested your hormonal sperm count or what have you. Cause it can. Yeah. Yeah, we can. These things, these things are all fucked up. You can't take this shit. No, that's why they can grow hair now. They literally have. I know the the guy. I know the drug. Everything. I checked it out, and I went. I'm 71 years old. My wife loves me like this. Sexy. You okay? look good. It looks good. I, I think so. You I think what, I like I'm myself. Gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you something. It looks like you look at guys now. Back in the day. Um, when it was the sunset strip days and it was the cowboy boots and all that stuff, you know, Lamar's 83, you know, we we're all going on. That was the look back then. But now if you look at a guy who's 50, 60, 70, and they're looking with, you know, you, you look like, it, it looks ridiculous. Brutal. It looks brutal. You look classy. <laughs> you look classy like this. You know, my, my mother always said, she said, you know, look at this. God right don't, Tara, look God don't, says. God, what does Debbie say? Tara, Tara goes, you look great. Debbie also. Look at this. Debbie. Hansen. Thanks, babes. Thank Debbie you, babes. Joe, and I'll tell you, my wife loves it too because, you know, you can do a lot with this. Uh, you look, you look <laughs> better. My said years ago, and I've never forgotten it, rest her soul. She said, God only made a few perfect heads and the rest he put hair on. That's right. That's and this right. is the perfect head. That's it. The girls love it, right? That's it. That's but it. The girls, the girls love it. Girls. I don't give a shit what you guys say because you're all going to be there. And a lot of you are still wearing hair and you're afraid to come out. And I started something. I've seen a couple of shorts on YouTube now. Yeah. You know, rock stars who wear wigs and they go right down the list. Right. So my wife looks at me. She goes, you started that. And I go, <laughs> probably they're all going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? They say, you know, grow old gracefully. Yes. And it's true. It's true. You're not supposed to be doing the same things you did when you were 30 or even 40 or even 50. It, you grow you grow differently. But hopefully you grow in a more mature, evolved, more consciousness, more complete humanity within yourself. You know, that's the way you're supposed to evolve. You're not supposed to devolve. And you're not supposed to try to hang on to something that doesn't serve you anymore. It no. just doesn't serve me, you know? No. It, it, it's like, um, I don't know why people want to hang on to the past because that's what you're trying to get rid of. That's where all the problems are. And that's why I go back to Belly of the Beast because Belly of the Beast, it's it's showing a different side of you. It's showing you yeah. real side. You unveiled. You're like, this is who I am. I'm true. Shadows falling, it begins. Because the world now is in, it's up shit's creek as we know it. Right. It's, it's up shit's creek and with bat, without a paddle. It's okay. Uninvited guest, he comes again. Right? And all I'm doing is speak, speaking truth. There's one guy on YouTube who has absolutely no views. And I'm going to get in touch with him and do his podcast because he said, this guy is talking truth. And that's that alone. And I, I, I wrote in the comics, my respect, man. He doesn't know it's me, but I re respect. That's very cool. You know that's why? Cool. Because he was the first one to say, he's talking truth. He's not a coward. He's actually coming out and saying it. He don't give a shit if you cancel him or if you snuff him or if you snub him or whatever you do. He's going to bring it to you. And I will be redeemed someday. I know it. So afraid of who I am. All I want to do is bring some awareness to people. I got to take the chance. Who's going to do it? You know, in one of my interviews, I think I came up with a good catchphrase. I said, somebody had to say it. I guess it was me. Oh, 
But what's funny, and I'll get back to it again, it's funny is now they're going, oh, we forgot to put his wig on. What, 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 do you, what do you mean? I didn't forget, you asshole. When I want to put it on, I do put it on. It's a costume. Glenn Hughes, my brother Glenn Hughes said it when, when I did the reveal. He just said, it's like Shakespeare. The world's a stage, man. We're all actors. You know, we're, it's all just a costume that we, we all, in this flesh body, you know, we are spirits in a material world. In this mm-hmm. flesh body, it's all a costume. So costume. What, what do they want? I mean, they're still not happy. We're the knowing. They're not happy. That's, that's their problem. You know. You know what? The, you just said it right there. They're not happy, and they're not happy no. with themselves. You just no. said it. Just Such said. a bad life for them. I feel, actually, I, I try to pray for people like that because it's like, what are you? Mama never hugged you. What is it? You're missing so much that you have to continue sort of just knocking somebody's something. You know, are you kidding me? You know, I realized I got to tell this story now that I thought of it. We come off the stage, the height of a rainbow, 30,000 people in the arena or whatever, maybe more. I don't know. We're sweating to the gills, you know, where the blood is pumping. And all of these kids from Make-A-Wish Foundation were lined up in the receiving line, wheelchairs and everything. And I remember going up to one kid and getting on my knees while I was at his level or even below. And I was going, you got to. You got to hang on, man. You got to believe. And he, you know, and all this bullshit, right? And he gave me a look in the eyes that I can see to this day of, of absolute kindness and forgiveness for my stupid stupidity and arrogance. And I stopped cold and I went, I'm telling you, I'm telling you to be strong. And I broke down on this kid's lap, crying, real tears of the fact of you're the hero, my man. You're you're the rock star, not me. You're the real rock star here. Because that changed my life forever. Just an incident like that. And he didn't say anything. He didn't have to. It was all in just the softness and forgiving eyes. And I was so, I was so humiliated about myself thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Who do you think you are? Derek Sherinian? <laughs> <laughs> you know, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. That's a those great are story. the real heroes right those are, there. Those are, those you're absolutely right. Yeah.